video, I'm going to try and conduct an apples to apples and oranges to oranges performance comparison between 3D Coat version 3.7, which was the last official release, and version 4, which has been newly released. There have been some improvements on the score of anywhere between 2 to 10 times as much of a performance gain. So, I'm going to try and demonstrate here one of the areas that I've personally noticed uh, the biggest difference, or one of the biggest differences, and that is working with large texture maps and large brush sizes. Just to give a little bit of history here, Andrew went in about three to four years ago and multi-threaded almost the entire application. He also did some significant work on the brush engine as well, and so that really brought the performance level up you know, to an entirely new plateau. So, if you are working with smaller maps like 1K to 2K maps on a game model, you might not notice as much of a difference. It's when you need to push the application that you'll notice uh, such a dramatic difference. So, for example, I have a 4K map on the body here, a 4K map on the head, a 2K on the eyes, and 2K map for the groin cloth. Uh, you can see that here. I go to the mesh and texture resolution. You can see 4K, 4K, 2K, and 2K. All right. So you'll also notice that each side of the head takes up almost half of a 4K map here. Whereas on the body, uh, larger portions like this, this chest area, takes up a much smaller percentage of the overall UV space. So when I paint with a large brush, I'll create a new blank layer here. I have only the color channel selected. I'll choose a different brush uh, draw mode here. And so if I use a large brush here, the performance is still quite good. You may not notice much of a difference. It's very fast, very fluid, no problem at all. Especially on an Intel CPU, I've noticed a dramatic difference between uh, the AMD 6-core CPU I was using and a 6-core i7, which is actually 12 threads. But um, one of the reasons for this is the multi-threading work that Andrew did is based on Intel's TBB library, which stands for Thread Building Blocks Library. And obviously, Intel is going to optimize their CPUs to work uh, more efficiently uh, with that library than perhaps AMD would. So perhaps there's some you know, trickery going on there, some dirty tricks on Intel's part. I don't know, but the reality of the matter is there is a discernible difference. So I thought I would bring that up as well uh, while we're at it. So um, yeah, with the same brush size, no problem here, but as soon as I go to the head area, you'll notice the little white crosshair and the yellow circle are not necessarily linked. You can see the little white crosshair gets out ahead. And what that means is the white crosshair is your actual uh, cursor position, your, your stylus or your mouse. Whereas in the yellow circle is the brush engine. Okay, so when you see the you know, white crosshair get out beyond, then you can tell uh, from the viewer perspective that there is indeed some lag occurring. Okay, and at certain points, it's almost, uh, if I scale it up even larger, it almost won't even put any pixels down at all. It really starts to choke. Again, if you're working on a game model, you're probably not pushing the application quite this hard, and you won't notice uh, this. Okay, so let's bring it down just a little bit more. Right now it's at about 70. Let's bring it down to about 55 or so. And you can see there still is quite a lot of lag occurring here. Uh, go to the body area and it's not so noticeable. So again, uh, it really is a matter of just how much, uh, you know, how, how many pixels is actually having to be applied per second or per brush stroke. Okay, so you can see Laggy here, not so laggy here. 
And on an AMD CPU, right now I'm using an Intel i7-970, which is a six-core CPU. It's about three or four years old, so uh, at least it gives you some idea that uh, maybe on a newer model, uh, the performance would probably scale even better. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead now and open up. Oh, before I do that, I want to show one way to notice it even better, and that is the frames per second. Okay, you can see without me doing any work, it's relatively around 100 to 125, and let me create a new blank layer here. And when I'm working in the head area, watch how much the frames per second will drop once I let up. Okay, you see it dropped to about 25. Okay, um, sometimes down to 15. If I go even higher, it's an even bigger drop usually. Okay, so that gives you some kind of indication uh, from a viewer perspective that indeed, you know, there not only is some lag, but it'll give us some kind of a benchmark uh, to compare with version 4. All right. So let me go ahead and open up version 4. And I will I'll go ahead and click on that. And I'll close 3.7. Okay, and and just for you know integrity's sake, I want to go here to mesh and texture resolution, and you can see it's the same texture size, same model, same texture size. Okay, you know, hit the W key to turn on wireframe. And I'm going to change, under theme, I'm going to change the wireframe uh, to black. Okay. All right, so now with relatively the same color, I'm going to create a new blank layer. Drag that above just in case uh, there is some masking going on or something. Okay, in the body area, again, you can watch the frames per second. It only drops to about 60 or 70 frames per second. At the, at the least and I can just tell you know on my end it's much more lively even though the performance was very good at this brush size you know on the body it was already very good but it's really brisk uh, in version 4 here and again you can quantify it to some degree uh, here with the frames per second so now uh, let's go here to the head area and we had what, a radius of about 77 to, to 55. So uh, I think it's been scaled differently here in version four, but still the brush size is, this is probably about 55. And it's just, I'm just gobsmacked at how well uh, this performs. So it drops to about 38, so there's an improvement there. 40, if I go to a larger brush size, okay, yeah, it's really amazing. It's not to say that if, you know, I'm working on an 8K or 16K map that I won't notice some performance limitations still, but uh, you know, like I said, at 4K, the large brush size, this is really uh, a, a major improvement. Now, it's starting to lag a little bit with this size of a brush. But we weren't even getting any 
uh, pixels at all with this brush size in 3.7. So if I slow my brush down a bit, it's much more fluid and lively. And it drops to about 30 frames per second, so it's still an improvement even with a larger brush still a significant improvement over 3.7 okay and again here in a body with a really huge brush frames per second drops to about 30 this is on a uh, GTX 580 graphic card and it really doesn't have a lot of bearing on the frames per second it's mostly CPU multi-threading that uh, accounts for the performance. That's not to say that if you have a large uh, texture map like this and you have a graphic card that only has maybe um, one gigabyte of video RAM or less then you might notice limitations uh, to some degree just because it's not able to store enough texture data on the graphic card. This one happens to have uh, three gigabytes of, of video RAM so uh, it's, it's probably not going to give me any issues. Okay, so drop that once again Again, with a large brush here in the head area. It's quite nice. And even here in a UV texture editor, uh, it would be a bit laggy here as well in 3.7. It's just really smooth, buttery smooth here. Uh, let me switch to, yeah. And you can see it, it's how fast it's updating. I'll undo this one more time. Okay, so you can see it's updating in real time, just extremely fast and fluid. Okay, so in the next test, we will take a look at sculpting in the voxel sculpting room. Stay tuned.